Many years later, I was introduced to the ministry of R.B. Thien, Jr. at Baraka Church in Houston. Now, in the meantime, I had progressed to using a chalkboard to illustrate and to diagram, and I'd go home with my hands covered with chalk all over, chalk dust, chalk dust all over the floor, so one of the men said, do you know how to use an overhead projector? He, and I said, yes, he, and he bought one for the congregation. And did. After the worship, they would put up a screen and bring in my projector, and I would teach the word of God. So when I heard about RBT, and I, the way I heard about him was uh, uh, um, somebody gave me some records. They were 16 and two-thirds speed. Nobody has a record player that plays that slow anymore. And uh, the basic series had the doctrine of unlimited atonement. And I hadn't run about anybody who was a Calvinist who believed in the doctrine of unlimited atonement. Except me. So I said, gee, he must be smart. So I said, I'm going to give him a hearing because he and I agree on the doctrine of unlimited atonement, and yet we're Calvinists. Believe in eternal security. So I listened to the records, and I said, my earballs perked up. I had no idea he used an overhead projector at the time. I couldn't, you couldn't tell. They were edited for these records. And so it was that uh, I thought, now, there is some. So I called, I wrote to Baraka Church, wrote to him one time, you know, and asked about materials that were available, and got a letter from Ron Brightwell. Ron Brightwell was the assistant pastor. And the letter said, Dear Reverend Pauly, Dear Pastor Pauly, uh, I'm writing this letter, though you wrote to Pastor Thiem. Our congregation believes that the time of our pastor in the study is more important than anything else. Therefore, we do not, he does not answer mail. He doesn't handle those things. We protect his time in the study so that he can teach us the Word of God at all costs. And when I saw that, in the first paragraph, I, I, my mouth dropped open. I said, well, now that's, that sounds like what it ought to be. Most churches want the pastor to run, to run errands, to, to paint the, uh, the, the, the walls, to clean the floor, to flush the toilets, to drive old ladies to, uh, to, to buy stuff at, the, new, at the, uh, the store, to visit in hospitals and homes and everything. And then he went on to answer my question and invite me to a pastor's conference. When I went down and I saw what I saw, I was sort of surprised. I said, well, boy, we do two things together. We both believe in unlimited time, and we both use an overhead projection. But when I saw him put the Greek words up, the overhead projection, in the original Greek form, and then under it write the transliteration, I was really shocked. I was really shocked. And uh, when I, I mean, I went down, I didn't know anybody. The second year I was down there, I met a friend of mine who was another pastor from how I never thought would be interested in this kind of thing, but he was. And so we had a great time of fellowship. Eventually, eventually, uh, I took with me seven men from our church, from this, from this church with me, to a pastor's conference. We had the, we had the best time. We didn't. Uh, the driving down, we sang half the way. We told jokes the other half the way. We just had a an absolutely fantastic time. We were put up in the, some the homes of the people of the church. They were very respected. One all one one family had a ranch, and they put us all up in the bunkhouse. Uh, the bunkhouse, yeah, they were, it was like a motel. Just wonderful, just wonderful. And so that was the year that we came back from the, uh, the pastor's conference in February and found out that the Milan Center Church was available for rent, for, for sale, in fact, for $5,000. They were selling that little old building out there. We didn't have two nickels to rub together, but it was too good an opportunity. So we said, can we buy with no money down, pay you like rent, and they were good enough to say yes. So that's, that's where it started. But... Uh, I figured if he had the nerve to do it, write it, write it out like that, I might as well have the nerve to do it too. 
I'll try it anyway. Nothing could get any worse, you know. You heard at the bottom, there's only one way to go, and that's up. And we had a, we, I just had such a tremendous time. I told you about the time down on the plane where this fella got on. And a lot of people did this, and, and they, and it was really not fair, but they did, they were congregations who were desperate for the Word of God. They, were, they had some pastor who was teaching one of these other methods, and they would buy him a round-trip ticket to, to Houston and you put him up in one of the fine motels or hotels which were, were close to Baraka and say, uh, Lord, please help him to learn how to teach this way. And uh, I was on the plane just so I happened to turn to the fellow next to me. We were talking. He was going to Baraka Church, and that was exactly the case. Uh, have you ever heard of everything? Never heard of him before in my life. Well, you're in for a real treat. I saw him Monday night. He was so mad he was about to leave. He was, he, he was so angry. The old man does not mince any words, especially at pastor's conference. If he sees two people out there writing notes to each other, he'll stop a, a congregation of 2,000 people and chew them out so mercilessly that they would sooner swallow the paper than do anything else. And he, has, you know, he, he never has, has softened up, any, even in his old age, that I know of. But anyway... This guy was so angry, he was about to leave on Monday night. He was, he was, I mean, I'm talking about he was red-faced after the service. I mean, he was so mad, he could have bit the heads off of nails. And I simply said, now, wait a minute. Now, look, you, look you've, got a, you've got a plane ticket back Friday. You've got a hotel all week. You, all you have to do is come to class in the morning and the evening. You've got to play golf in the afternoon. Why did I put up with it? Friday night I saw him. He was ecstatic. He had never heard anything like this in all of his life. Next year I met him. Uh, he brought his wife. Uh, he, picked, he, he joined the plane and he got on the plane in Dayton. Uh, he, was, he was out of Springfield, Ohio. He was ecstatic. He was ecstatic. Well, one year I remember I roomed with a fellow. Okay, one year I remember I roomed with a fellow, uh, this was be before that, maybe, uh, and uh, at a Bill Gothard seminar, I went to one of these youth things, and he said, oh, what a wonderful year. He said, I just came back, I just came back from a refreshing time at uh, Baraka Church in Houston. He said, my congregation sent me. I knew why. Terrible. They sent me down there, to, and they sent him to this thing, too. They were hoping something would rub off on him. And he said, it was just fantastic. I was out in, uh, at the Grace Bible Institute in Omaha, Nebraska, and went into the office of the dean, and there on the wall, on his uh, bookcase, just filled with uh, 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 theme tapes, just packed in there. And uh, it, was, it was such a delight to, to see him, Dr. Burkholder. Well, that's how he, uh, the, the influence of, of the colonel has been tremendous down through the years. But the point has been that through it all, he is the one who, in this generation, has called the uh, quote-unquote clergy back to the ministry of uh, isagogics, categories, and exegesis. And I make no apologies. I always say that I am grateful for the fantastic influence and the input from Colonel Theme. I am not an original thinker. I recognize that. But I reflect all the things that I read and study. Uh, but I always put in there that I assume full responsibility for what I write. For while I have to give him credit for all that he has meant to me and my ministry, nevertheless, it's my responsibility what I put down on paper and not his. So that people can't write and say, what have you done <laughs> in, in my ministry? It's not fair to him. But anyway... There is no substitute for the communication of Bible doctrine.